Hey folks, Alan Saunders here, Pittsburgh Sports Live, wrapping things up at John Paul Jones Arena in Charlottesville, Virginia, where Pitt just lost its 12th straight game, a 73-49. Uh, it was a butt kicking by the number two Cavaliers and uh, not an unexpected result. The Panthers were 18 point underdogs coming in. Obviously, Virginia covered that, but it was a, a game that Pitt probably figured they weren't going to win. Um, but it was interesting in several ways because it was the first time this young Pitt team has played a defense like this, the first time they played in an atmosphere like this, a packed house here at John Paul Jones Arena. Yes, they've played and other buildings, but the combination of the way Virginia plays defense, uh, the atmosphere makes it extremely difficult for opposing offenses to score. And well, that played out for the Panthers. Uh, guards Xavier Johnson and Trey McGowan's didn't make a field goal. Johnson finished 0 for 7. McGowan's uh, did make one, one for three, uh, but not the kind of performance that they're used to seeing. And Jeff Capel said, look, this is a learning experience, and it's it's a learning experience two ways. Pitt can look at what they did wrong, and they can also look at a team that is built like the team that Pitt wants to become in Virginia, which became the number two team in the country by playing on selfish offense and elite level defense. I, I thought X actually played a pretty good game. Um, I thought for the most part he made the right plays, and there were a few times when he forcing things and trying to do it one on one and you know I like I don't want to remove his competitive spirit because it's one of the things that makes him good uh, one of the things we talked about with our team in preparation for this game when you play this team you have to be mentally tough because it's a team that can really frustrate you and you can't allow your frustration to turn something into a, a one on one battle be against Guy or be against Jerome I thought well, that happened to us a few times, but I thought he made when he made the right plays, you know, it led to really good opportunities for us. He didn't show up necessarily and assist. If we make a few more shots, then you know, his assist numbers go up and probably the floor opens up a little bit. Uh, but you know, Virginia, that's what they do, man. They, they make it difficult for you to score, and there are not a lot of teams that defend at the level that they do. Pitt actually led the game at the first media timeout and it looked like they were going to be able to hang with Virginia for longer than they did but some unforced errors really turned the game around Pitt actually had turnovers on three straight possessions at one point turned the ball over 10 times in the first half um, but it wasn't necessarily a fast break fest for the Cavaliers they scored just six points in transition uh, mostly their scoring came uh, through half court sets and they shot 57 percent from the floor for the game uh, and you know not the kind of effort that we've seen and become accustomed to for Jeff Capel's defense so far this year. But again, he said three really talented players in Ty Jerome and Cal Guy and DeAndre Hunter. And those are guys that give lots of teams problems, not just Pitt. I think they have three pros. Um, and it's, it's difficult. I mean, really good players can make defense look bad. And so I don't think it was as much. Our defense, I just think that they're really good. And... You know, we, if you look at the match, you know, for the season, they have three guys to score for them, and then everyone else scores, gets baskets off of those three guys. And we had our freshman garden, and I love the fact that they took the challenge of doing that, and it's something that certainly will help us in the long run. Uh, but again, I thought we did some good things defensively, but good offense beats good defense. If there was a bright spot for the Panthers, it was the play of freshman wing Audis Tony, who scored 12 points, his most and first time in single digits since all the way back at the first North Carolina State game. It was 13 games ago that he last scored 10 points or more. And Tony acknowledged that going through a slump at this point of the year while the team is struggling has been tough, and it was tough to find a way to pull out of it. The fact that he did uh, here on this floor against this team is certainly a good sign for his mental toughness going forward as he comes to the end of his freshman season. Uh, I was just more confident. Uh, I had to, had to like, get out of the slump somehow, so this game was the one I had to get, come out of the slump, so that's basically it. Has it been hard to just kind of keep your head up throughout this time? It was. Uh, it was it's a mental thing. Uh, when you're in a slump, you have to find a way to dig out of it. And like the coaches said, just keep your head up and keep playing and be you. So that's what I had to do. Yeah, how much more difficult is that made by the fact that, you know, you're, I guess, almost 30 games into your freshman season here, but all this is still relatively new? I mean, how much 
tougher does that make it? Uh, it really, it really makes it real tough because, like, like you said, like being a freshman, you want to be, you want to be the best as you can be. Uh, you want to do whatever you can just to contribute to the team. And when you've been in a slump like that, it, it's really frustrating and it's and it's, and it's hurtful at times because you want to be out there to help your team doing contributing different things. But at the same time, it's life, so you got to keep moving on from it. So. Next up, the Panthers will travel to Miami on Tuesday before finishing their ACC regular season at home against Notre Dame on Saturday. Until next time, I'm Alan Saunders from Charlottesville, Virginia. Thanks for watching Pittsburgh Sports Live.